All right. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. All right. Yep, I'm still working on this cowboy. Uh, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Sorry, I missed the last two times, but I'm here. What's up, guys? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes? Sounded good? What's up, Eric? Hello, hello. Awesome. All right, I'm trying something new tonight. I'm streaming three different places. So I'm streaming to Pixelogic and my own channel and a YouTube channel. So we're going to try that out and see how it goes. <laughs> I'm using a thing called Restream. So looks like we're doing pretty good. Um, let me get a chat up here. Awesome. What's up, Toaster? Thank you very much. Okay, and yes, we're still working on this cowboy. Let me shut this. Sorry, one second. So how's everybody doing tonight? <clears throat> Thanks so much. All right. Let's see how fast we we are. I will make it's a it's actually a dinosaur, and yes, I will make the dinosaur. So, this is what it looks like. Let me make it turn up the opacity. This is what I'm working on. This is phenomenal art done by uh, Johannes Helgeson. I love his stuff. Love it. Love it. So if any of you are over at uh, YouTube watching me from there, please uh, please type hello or something so I can make sure you're there and it's working. Okay. Yes. So when I tonight I'm going to work on the in, internal details of the of the cowboy. Let me turn the opacity down a little bit more. Okay. So the internal details meaning like. Um, like these teeth and the circle, some of these pouches, maybe some of the uh, buttons, belt buckles, bullets. I doubt we'll get to the gun tonight. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So how much have I invested in this scope so far? Um, let's see. If I were to guess maybe six or eight hours, something like that, if I were to guess. So I, I do it in two hour sessions and I think we're up to, oh, um, let's see. I think we're up to like five sessions with him, maybe six. I'm not sure. So do I paint well? Uh, I, I mean, I color him, but as far as like, do I sit down and paint with a paintbrush? No, not really. I, I'm not that good of a paint painter, traditional painter as it were. Okay, <clears throat> six. Okay, so I guess we've done six. Thank you for that. Not too bad. Making making uh, some progress here. Um, tonight I wanted to show you guys this really cool plugin that uh, another Zebra streamer. His name is Joe Pickup. He showed me. I want to show you guys. It's called the Z Scene Manager. I gotta show you this. Hey, what's up? You got the warbles? <laughs> Let me take a peek. Oh yeah. So uh, the advice for that, Eric, is to um, to lower your polygon count and still pinch it, uh, do creases and stuff like that around the around the edges. Just keep it really low. Even retopologize it if if you can. And that's, that's the best way to get rid of the warbles because the higher the density on the surface, the more uh, apt you are to get those warbles, if that makes sense. And it is not necessary to paint, but it definitely helps. Absolutely helps. So all aspects of art will help your uh, modeling, your sculpting. So 
and a good sense of color will really help your color skills, your texturing skills, stuff like that. But do you have to be a good traditional painter? Uh, I would say no. Um, it, it really helps, but you don't have to. So, okay, but check this out. This is the, the Z Scene Manager. This is an external plugin. Non, this is a non-Pixel Logic plugin. I'm not sure who, who made it, but Oh, it's so cool. Hang on, let me, I'm gonna turn off my music. Okay. <clears throat> I had music going on. I don't think you guys could hear it, but. Okay. Um, so this, you can see every single one of my sub tools here, which is super cool. These are grayed out because I'm just using the free version of it right now. I'm probably gonna pay for it, but. Um, and the free version allows up to 25, um, subtools in this list but this is so cool because you can do uh it gives you all sorts of information over here so basically this pp that means it has poly paint on it that's each subtool and if it has uvs it'll show you if it has textures if it has symmetry turned on noise masking layers if it has uh, double sided so if you see right here see it says double if i turn that off on this subtool you can see that it, it's over here. And then uh, you can see how many points are in each subtool. Super cool information. And if I have dynamic subdivision turned on or not on that particular subtool, or if I do have real subdivision levels, it will show me if they're subdivided right in this pan, this column right here, and if they're visible or not. So it's super cool. And you can go through, this is something you can't do in regular ZBrush but you can go through and you can group up things and move things around. So I can, um, I can move the hair up the stack just by grabbing it. Oh, is it blocked by chat? I'm sorry, let me move it over here. Thank you. I'll hide this for a second. Okay, sorry. I have too much crap on my interface. So let me see, let me go back here, okay. Um, yes, I have Twitter and Instagram. Uh, it's Shane Olson Art. If you look for Shane Olson Art, I believe on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I'm at. <clears throat> and you can follow me here on Shane Olson Art. Um, so this is, uh, let me see if I can, it's called, it's called Z Scene Manager. If somebody can put a link in there, uh, that'd be great. Um, the name of the maker is Exocide. I think you're right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. So if, if you right click on here, it gives you a whole bunch of options. And one of these options is group selection. And you can merge and delete and duplicate. These are all things that you can do in standard ZBrush, but group selection you can't. So that's unique to this, this viewer. So I could basically grab the shirt and the shirt collar and then right click and say group selection and that will actually put it in a group. Super cool. So anyway, I'm just starting to use this and so far it's really cool. So thank you very much, me. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it onto my other monitor so I can get it out of the way, bring this back up. But anyway, scene manager, really cool. I'm just getting into it, so it's pretty cool. So thank you, Joe Pickup. That's very awesome. Hey, what's up, Rabbit? How's it going? I'm trying this new chat called uh, Restream and this new stream thing called Restream that allows me to stream to YouTube and Pixelogic and my, uh, my Twitch channel all at the same time. It's pretty crazy cool. So anyway, welcome tonight, guys. How's it going? How's everybody's new year, 2018? Yes, I'm still working on this cowboy in 2018. <laughs> So I wanted to start by putting putting this belt on him. So I'm gonna grab the pants, and I have a bit of a cold, <coughs> so I apologize if I'm if I'm coughing tonight. <clears throat> um, I've had it since Christmas. My whole family has. We've all we've all just been hacking. It's horrible. Let's see. Duplicate. Hide this one. There we go. And I also finished up the uh, 
in my in my workshop I do a a challenge every other month, and um, this challenge I did uh, we did uh, a winter challenge, and I got some really really good entries. I'll I'll show you guys here in a little bit, but I'm I'm super happy with the entries I got. And I have them judged by professionals in the industry. So that's pretty exciting because I like to get the students work, work out there in front of professionals so they can see and start to get, start to get some eyes on it. Um, did I study? Uh, I went to the Art Institute of Seattle. It's just a two, it's like a two year degree. Um, I don't recommend a tech school like that. There are some universities that offer uh, that offer some pretty nice programs right now. Uh, there's a local university called the University of Utah and Brigham Young University. They both offer nice uh, game and or film programs that teach you modeling. And then there's a lot of online stuff if you want to learn this stuff online. I'm not sure if I want to take his belt all the way around. I think I will. But you can learn from like uh, Nomen. You can learn from Mold 3D. Anim School. Then there's a whole bunch of small tutorials. Like, um, like I, I offer an online course. It's called 3D Character Workshop. And uh, my buddy Matt Thorup, he he does some Gumroad tutorials that are really good. <clears throat> Let's see. There's a whole bunch of opportunities for learning nowadays. I'm pretty jealous of you guys, because back when I back when I was learning it, the only the only option I knew of was you know, Art Institute of Seattle, and it wasn't, it was pretty good, but could have been better. <laughs> Let's see, and what do I prefer to start with in the world of 3D, be a freelancer or work with an employee? Probably with an employee, because then you can do on the job training with other people that are already doing it they're already professionals and you can learn from them at the same time when you're doing freelancing on your own you don't there's nobody really to learn from except for what you can find online so i would suggest trying to find work at a business first <clears throat> okay let's see <clears throat> to inflate this a bit. No, 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 no. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Okay, control to inflate. I keep forgetting about that. There we go. Thanks, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, I've done this for a long time. I think uh, I'm going on 19 years, not with ZBrush, but just with modeling and stuff. Do I not recommend masking and extracting when doing belts? Um, I honestly, I tend to do it just the way you watch me do it right now with the top with the topology brush, and the reason why is because it just gives me gives me more control and lower resolution when I'm done. So um, I will use the mask extract technique when I'm doing a little more detailed stuff, 
But when I'm doing just straps and belts and things like that, I tend to just draw it on because it's quicker for me. I don't know. Just a pre personal preference. Let's see. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a couple belt loops. <clears throat> See, for these belt loops, I'll do the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll usually duplicate the object that I'm going to draw on top of. Then I'll grab this topology brush. And then I'll draw the belt loops on there. Just like that. Make a couple faces. Not the prettiest right now. Um, yeah, it's kind of wonky. Hang on, let me fix that. <clears throat> Let's redraw that up underneath there. <laughs> That's weird. Keeps getting confused what I'm trying to do. There we go. Okay. So then uh, I'll just click on the surface. Let's solo this so you can see what I actually did here. See these belt loops? Now I can just hide the pants and then delete hidden. And then it, I, it's, uh, I'm left with these loops that I drew. So see if I would have, uh, if I would have masked that off and extracted it, I would have needed a very high density polygon mesh underneath to extract it from. And right now these pants are not they're not very high density if I can select them. See this? They're just, it's just dynamically subdivided. It's not dynamashed or anything like that. I like to work really, really low. So you, you'll notice that most of my parts, um, well, if you look at that, uh, if you look at that Z scene manager, so let me update this. Hey, what's up, Sean? So if you look at Z scene manager, you'll see that all of these um, the dynamic subdivision levels are turned on for most of them. That's, that's how I like to work. <clears throat> Thanks, Sean. Happy New Year, man. All right. So here's these belt loops, and they're, they're super low poly. So what I'm going to do is just solo them so I can zoom in and edit them a little bit because if I hit uh, D for dynamic you can see that they're gonna they're gonna subdivide down and have round edges on the top and the bottom and I want to I want to keep them having straight edges so what I can do I just turn dynamic subdivision back off what I can do is uh, <clears throat> yes I'm gonna do that dinosaur Sean I will for sure and what I'll do is uh, I'll hit this auto groups. Sorry, not auto groups. Group by normals. If I hit group by normals, it's going to put a different poly group after it goes past 45 degrees. So it put a new poly group on the top and on the bottom. And now I can just go uh, crease by poly groups right here. And that's going to add a crease on these edges. So now if I hit dynamic subdivision levels, it's going to smooth it out and it's going to keep them. Uh, hard edges on the top and the bottom. Really easy. And now I want to um, I want to insert some edge loops here. Just to round these out a little bit more. I want to put it on this side. Let's see. And I'm just going to mask this and just kind of edit it a little bit. And I want the, I want the loops, the belt loops to go into the pants. You know, I mean, loops will kind of go 
uh, along with the pants and get sewn in. You can do it like that, or you can hook them in. Um, I'm gonna just, let's see. Yeah, with these they just kind of they just kind of hook around the top and the bottom. I just want them to just look like they're going and then just getting sewn right along that edge. So I'm gonna curl them in. Let me switch to a mask lasso. It's a better idea. See, I can curl them. I just kind of go like that. I'll do the same with the top. Sometimes it gets skewed, so you need to make sure you look at it from all directions. So how about you guys, have you set any uh, New Year's goals? Scope more? <clears throat> okay. Turn on, there we go. Now you can see that I need to pull this out away from the belt. It's a little thick. I might just curl that completely over the top, we'll see. Starts to bog a little bit when I have all of my subtools showing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I, I want to make that belt thicker now that I look at it. Park this at the top and just extrude it down. And then I'll do the same with those loops. Um, um yes, so so this stitching right here, these big stitches, I will I will most likely add. I kind of want to do some uh, some texture treatments to this guy once I get him to a, a point where he's going to be textured. I want to add some like leather looking stuff, um, some cloth looking stuff. I haven't really taken a character to that level yet. Um, and I really want to play with some substance painter later. And uh, I, want to, I want to texture him in there. So the answer is yes. I would love to. So there you go, belt loops. I might make them thicker, like a little wider. Ah, oh. uh, local symmetry. <clears throat> there we go. Just like that. Okay, and for these, uh, I want to make these little buttons on his vest. I still want to make his vest, the, this part of it, kind of end quicker and curl down. So it looks like an overlapping vest. Because right now, I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> Never seen a real vest do that. So I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, let's see. Yeah, so let me add those buttons. I, I kind of like to work from the surface outwards. So just kind of build up what's on the surface and work my way out. <coughs> and again, I apologize. I have a, have a pretty nasty cough that I've had since Christmas. 
Okay, so for this, I'm trying to remember what Paul told me. there was a way to add um whoops all right what did i do i thought there was a way to add primitives onto an object that already exists without replacing it paul uh paul gabriel told me how to do it and i forgot so i'm just going to do it a different way to pick this sphere. There we go. It's polysphere. Hmm. That's six. Six. Yeah, this is 4R8P2, uh, so patch 2. Okay, that's not going to work anyway. Oh, well. I'll just delete this guy and just draw it on the surface. Select that vest. Yeah, this one is Johannes's. Yep. Duplicate. Okay. <clears throat> we can use an insert. What's up, Robbie? <laughs> Thanks, man. <coughs> oh, goodness. All right, coffee. Yeah, I just wish it wasn't taking me so long. <laughs> it's taking me a while. This guy. Yeah, right? Why, Johnny Ringo, you look like somebody just walked over your grave. Or like McCree from from uh, Overwatch a little bit. Yeah, I think this is, uh, somebody said session number six. So I think he's, he's had six sessions. I'm just lining this up to the world so I can clip it. I'm just going to clip it flat. Like that. And then shrink this down. Yes, I did, Sean. What's up, Harry? How's it going, man? Welcome, welcome. Sorry I missed you guys last week. Well, last week was Christmas, right? So I wasn't streaming, but the week before that, yeah, when something came up, some Christmas stuff, man, it was a... It was a crazy week, for sure. <coughs> I 
<laughs> John, John, you can't make me laugh. I'll, I'll cough myself to a coughing fit. <laughs> Yeah, if I get him to that point, it'd be awesome. Just pushing this vest in so these line up. They don't look weird. So how's everybody doing tonight? Anyway, thanks for spending your time hanging out, watching me sculpt stuff. This, I know this is going to be way too bright, but I don't care. Boom. Yep. Too much. There we go. Still yellow. Let's go more orange. What Cintiq is this? This is... Uh, this is the 27th. Yeah. The non touch. 27. Okay. So now I've been I've been trying to figure this out. What's going on with You can see this belt. It doesn't quite make sense. I guess it I guess it would if it tucked inside this duster right here but it's a little it's a little weird because this pouch is kind of hanging on the outside of this guy so I'm gonna have to cheat it a little bit and it's kind of like a bandolier where this belt wraps all the way around his torso and up over his shoulder and then it has these you know a couple pouches right there <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 60 inch. Let's see. So I'm just going to try and put... I'm going to try and put a belt around him right, right here. What's up, Rabbit? <coughs> oh, have, he has a hole in there. <laughs> oh. Oh, a new 22 and a 27? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. I just, I, I hope they update, I, I hope they put buttons on here. I doubt they ever will, but I really miss the buttons on the sides of my 20, 24 HD. <laughs> Under the rain flap, yep. I think I'll just keep it tucked up underneath there and just kind of shift those two these two uh, pouches over a little bit so it makes sense because I really want his coat to be able to flare up and come up and move around and stuff and if, if it was kind of sticking out with a hole or something it would be tied tied down to him could be kind of weird yeah yeah like that drunken oh you have the 24 and you only ever use the one button to change monitors Oh man, I, I set it up when I was working at uh, Disney, I set it up so I had all the buttons um, mapped to all the functions I needed and I could slide my keyboard away and I could set my Cintiq right down in my lap. And then I could just kind of chill and just kind of sculpt without messing with the keyboard. It was, it was nice and I miss it. So, okay, let's get to, let's get to business. I'm gonna hide this coat for a minute. He's gonna look funny. His rain flap showing. Man, his shoulders look weak. <laughs> I want to bring those up because they look so weak now. All right. I don't care. You're not going to see him. All right. Boyd, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping by. How you doing? Yeah, or make them a little smaller. I'm sure we can, sure we can figure something out. How you been, man? Good to see you. Virtually see you. 
<laughs> All right, take care, Sean. Thanks for stopping by, man. <clears throat> yeah, 13 is too small. 13, you just don't have enough real estate to really do anything with it, you know? Boyd, that's good to hear, man. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to do one here. Again, the person who was asking me about um, why don't I use the mask extract method, why do I use this method? And this is a prime example. I don't know how I could do this really any other way other than drawing the topology on by hand. That's pretty thick. I'm going to do it thinner. Mm. Yeah, I tried a 13 for a little while and it was just, you know, 13s are fantastic for storyboard artists because if you think about it, a 13 inch is about the size of a panel for a storyboard. And our storyboard artists at Disney, they loved them. They loved them. They all took them and used them. So, and that makes sense. Okay. Hey Boyd, where are you at these days? What are you doing? Some freelance stuff? Still in Arizona? <clears throat> All right. <coughs> yeah, I have a Surface, a Microsoft Surface that has a decent, decent sized screen and it works pretty good. I mean, it's not. It's not this, but it's not a tiny little thing either, you know? Oh, oh, you're in Austin. Did I know that? I think you told me that. That's cool. All right. Well, split my mass points. Now I have two. Delete. There you go. I have a lot of friends in Austin nowadays. Seems like that's where the that's where the game studios are. A lot of them, anyway. <laughs> what? What's up, mutated jellyfish? Coming to heckle? Do a flip. How's it going, man? Oh, you've been thinking about getting a Surface? They're they're pretty nice, especially if you uh, travel a lot. They're very they're very travel friendly. But to to work on full time, like as a full time gig, um, yeah, I don't I don't know that they would. I would use it as my main machine. It's pretty it's pretty solid though. It's pretty strong for a little. I can't believe they pack so much power in that little thing. Mac and cheese. Jealous. Let's make a little room. So when uh, you'll notice that I don't have any gaps on this stuff. I try not to leave gaps because eventually I might like to 3D print this. And if there's gaps, you'll get pockets of liquid resin in there. So you want to make sure he's pretty, uh, pretty watertight. That's why I'll run. So, so see this vest collar, how it just kind of runs right into the collar of the coat. I do that on purpose just so there, there aren't any gaps or holes in here. It also helps when you go to uh, 
uh, project maps on your low res if you don't have any gaps showing. <clears throat> yeah, so just for some advice, if you're gonna if you're thinking about a surface for like your main computer, unless you do a ton of traveling, you know, you're on the road all the time or um, you know, you're I don't know, up in the mountains or something, then I, I would recommend getting a desktop for sure. Just because of the the power and the, the size of like Cintiq and stuff you can get. Um, like, I don't know. It's tough, man. Like, I, I couldn't see me using my Surface as a full-time machine. I use it for presentations all the time. Like when I go to schools and things. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, Harry, let's see. Any advice on what it what to look for in a pre-built desktop PC running ZBrush. Main rig bit the dust today. Oh, sorry, man. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I just, you know, the latest i7, if you're going to go PC uh, with the, you know, the, the, the biggest you can afford, I usually go one below the top because the top one is just ridiculous expensive and the gains are just minimal for how much you have to pay. So, you know, one or two notches down below the, the fastest one you can get today. And as far as RAM, you can get away with like 32 or less. You don't necessarily have to get 64 or something ridiculous, like 128. Um, like I'm running, I'm running 32 on this one. I did have 64, but it kept crashing for some reason. Um, and then as far as a video card, just a nice NVIDIA card will do it. I, I have two in here and I think it's overkill. Um, if I were to do it again, I'd just get one. You don't necessarily need two, you know. It's just being... I was. I have these dreams of rendering, you know. I still do, but uh, it's, that's just overkill. Um, let's see. <clears throat> you just upgraded to an LED keyboard and mouse? <laughs> yeah, man. Set it to red. I love... That being said, though, I know you're joking around, mate, but... That being said, I love this keyboard. This is the best keyboard I've ever had. It's a it's a Corsair Silent. So it's a mechanical keyboard. I don't know if you guys can see it. Here, let me see if I can lift it up. Can you guys see this? It's all glowy and cool. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a mechanical keyboard, so the keys feel really nice. But I hate the clicky clack because I'm, you know, streaming all the time. And this is a silent. I just got this at Best Buy. So, um, you, uh, you, it's just really nice as far as like the keys, and then it's not really loud. It's still loud. You can probably hear that, right? If I hit it pretty hard, but I'm still hitting it, and you can't hear that. So, anyway, and then I have this, um, I have this mouse that's just a Logitech. I don't even know what it is, but this is uh, this is a pretty cool mouse. I mean, it's just a mouse, but it's you know, I do a lot of gaming too, so that's my gaming mouse. All right, fun stuff, fun stuff. Let's see. But I'm a nerd when it comes to like tech stuff, you know. <laughs> like my my machines all. LEDs and crap because I'm a nerd you know there's a uh, what are they called Mo motorheads guys you know that like their their cars and their engines well, I'm, a mo I'm kind of a motorhead too but this is the machines like my it's like my car Let's soup it all up is it are you talking about the mouse is the mouse the K70 I don't know let me see if I still have a box. Uh, <clears throat> I can't see it. I don't know what it is. Oh, the keyboard. The keyboard is a Strafe. It's a Strafe MX Silent. Yeah. Have I tried any VR stuff? I have. Um, I've tried. I've tried sculpting with VRs, and I'm I'm hoping. Uh, I'm really hoping ZBrush does some VR stuff. I do. Yes, Pixelogic. Listen, listen. We're asking for it. Um, 
it's it's kind of fun, but it's uh, it's still kind of gimmicky right now, and it doesn't feel right. You know, like ZBrush feels right. I don't. There's no other software that kind of beats the way the sculpting feels. Um, the, the sculpting on VR just kind of feels like you're sculpting with shaving cream, and it even makes the shaving cream sound when you're using it. It's like, you know, it's funny. But anyway, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm getting distracted, you guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can distract me all you want. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of what I want to build next. Time we got almost nine. Let's keep going with the. Maybe we can make these guys. Some people were asking me about the Z Modeler brush earlier today. My students. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna do some Z modeling. What's up, Squirt? Squirt 101. Gravity Sketch VR is nice. Hard to be accurate. Yeah. The, you know, it'll get there, though. It'll get there. I'm sure it will. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for your input. Little pouches. So I'm going to make these pretty small. So, Boyd, have you been doing much ZBrushing? You still digging that? So you guys, Boyd, he's one of the best polygon modelers I've ever met. You should check out his stuff, Boyd Lake. Good stuff. I don't say that lightly, Boyd. <laughs> I worked with Boyd at Glyphix for a while on Advent Rising. It's true, man. You're like methodical when it comes to polygon modeling. <laughs> it was good times. I miss that. Okay, I'm going to make one and then I'll duplicate it. Yeah, boy, you you need to get into uh, this uh, this Z modeler, man. This is it takes a little bit to get your head around, but once you kind of understand what it does and how it can work, it can speed up your modeling time like crazy. Oh yeah, animation stuff. What's up, Dry Otter? Welcome. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. 2018 let's see okay I want to split this bevel like this it's just just that easy to split a single thing um, I'm gonna slide this edge up you just need to get used to this picker so this Z modeler picker, it's uh, context sensitive, which means if you're over a face, it'll do one thing. If you're over an edge, it'll do another. If you're over a vertice, it'll do another. So yeah, it's <clears throat> you. The the thing that really speeds you up though with the Z modeler is uh, the Q mesh right here. This Q mesh because uh, it does some crazy cool things. Let me show you. So let me go to QMesh here. QMesh is single poly. So what I was saying is like, here's, here's your actions, here's your target, and then some other abilities and modifiers that you can add on to that. So essentially you can say, how, how many faces do you want to affect? And you can also do temporary faces if you don't want to change your poly groups. And uh, so right now I can just QMesh a single poly. 
And if I grab this poly and push it in, you can see it starts or pull it out. You can see what it does. Let me turn this off here. Yeah, it does. It makes Maya feel weird. It's like, okay, this is trying to snap to the belt. Um, let me let me show you really quick. Do you guys want to see it really fast? A really small, quick lesson on Z Modeler. Um, let me just append. Up. Let's see. What can I append? Maybe a polysphere. Let's just go down to this polysphere and we'll try some stuff. All right. <clears throat> Let's just do some really quick Z Modeler stuff. All right. <coughs> oh, sorry about the coughs. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna replace this. So what's really cool is um, if you hit like W, E, or R, your gizmo will come up. And then you have this little gear. And if you click on the gear, you have these primitive options like polycube, polyplane, ring, polysphere. And when you hit one of these, it's going to uh, replace, here, let me see. This must have subdivision levels. Yes, it does. Okay, you can't have subdivision levels in order to do this. So I just deleted the subdivision levels. Now if I hit uh, polycube, there we go. There we go. Okay, it gives you a polycube and it gives you these little arrows right here. See these little arrows? And you can adjust uh, the, the divisions right here on the fly. See that? So even down to to one, if you want, let's give it let's give it two. And you can do that for each axis. And then when you're done, you click the gear again, and you go back to Gizmo 3D. And now I have a cube uh, with just different div subdivisions. It's really easy. Okay, so now here comes the magic of Q mesh. Okay, and I could turn on symmetry. But what I can do is see that. So as I push in. It will it will weld that together see that angle and you can set that angle right down here you can step set the step size how how much the attraction works if it has no attraction you can set your um, you can set your angle snapping like how much it snaps as it goes down and uh, just a whole bunch of stuff like that but another cool thing is you can grab one of these faces and push it all the way through and it'll make a hole. So like in Maya, you'd have to like push it in, delete those faces, weld them together. You know, it'd take you a while. And uh, you can also click on this poly group and you can use the, these poly group assignments and you can just tap on these squares. It's a little bit different. It's changing the poly group. It's hard to see. Um, but if I if I click it and hold and hit alt, it'll actually start cycling through polygroups. See that? And now I can click on those. Now uh, I can change the target to polygroup all. So I'm still doing, let's see, QMesh, polygroup all. So I'm going to do QMesh, polygroup all, and then I can grab this whole polygroup and push it all the way through. See that? Super fast. And then if I want to insert edges, <clears throat> you can see how it's set up to slide edge loop complete right now. That just means I can grab this, grab this edge loop and slide it. Well, I, don't, I don't know why it's not letting me slide edge loop. Oh, because it's, uh, it's symmetrical. So I can grab this one. There we go. See that? I can slide the whole thing or I can change it to just edge. And it'll slide just that edge. Or I can change it to, what's up Mad Duck? I can change it to uh, like split or insert, insert single edge loop and I can click on here and just move it around. See that? Pretty easy. And then there, there's also extrude that doesn't do the QMesh stuff. So I can extrude a single poly or poly group all. See that? And there's, there's a really cool one that's just an edge loop. Let me, 
let me insert an edge loop on this top here. So check this out. So if you don't want to go through and painstakingly make a poly group all the way around the outside and make a, a ring, you can go extrude and then hit uh, poly loop. And I don't know if you can see this, but if you, can you see that orange, the orange line? The orange line shows you a direction. So if I were to click and drag here, it's gonna go in that direction. See that? And then if I was to go this direction, I can go like that. See how fast that builds up? Just super fast. So yeah, just, I mean, that alone is just uh, super, super quick. And you can do all these things to those things. So um, yeah, like transpose and well, there's, you can do some creasing, you can bridge, bridge holes really nice. You can do some bevels, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, it's just, it's hard to get your head around because it's not like your typical modeling program, like Maya or something like that. Um, it's, it's box modeling, but it's in a different way. You know, you have to think about, like there's no cut. I can't just go, I can't select a, a, a vert and then another vert and connect the two. Uh, like, you know, like with a cut tool. I can't come through here and just cut, 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 you know. That doesn't exist. So you have to come up with kind of inventive ways to figure stuff out like that. And there's also this uh, this trim cut tool. You can use stuff like that. You just cut it, but anyway. It's, yeah, there's a collapse. <clears throat> oh yeah, polygroup normals, yeah, check this out. So if I use polygroup normals right now, um, group by normals, it will put polygroups on all the 90 degree edges like that, see? And then if I hit uh, crease by polygroups, it's gonna put creases around all those edges automatically. Then if I hit dynamic subdivide, it'll subdi subdivide that. Then if I go in here, say if I want to make this in this thing kind of round, I can go crease, edge loop partial, and let's uncrease that and this one and this one and this one. There we go. So it's kind of has kind of has some round edges now. I don't know, just this weird shape. round that out <laughs> yep so there's an um there there are a ton of ways to learn z modeler too so you can go to uh, pixel logic and check out z classrooms there's a lot on z modeler and z classrooms joseph drust teaches a ton of z modeler the only thing is it's it's kind of scattered it's not very very organized it's kind of all over the place so you kind of have to look and search for it um and then uh Michael Pavlovich, he also does a ton of um, Z modeler stuff and uh, Malicus the Black. He made some really cool headphones with the Z modeler that goes into detail. And uh, I don't know if Glenn Southern, if he actually did any tutorials on it or not, but he's done some just phenomenal stuff with the Z modeler. So anyway, there you go. A small, small primer on Z modeler. <laughs> okay. So there's my wacky, wacky Z modeler stuff. <coughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so could you bevel the edges around the outermost edges? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can run, and there's, there's several different ways to do it. You can actually insert some edges. Like you can, uh, if you had, if you had, an edge say an edge on the on the side like and you wanted to bevel it you could bring an edge up to that one and an edge into that one and then delete the middle one and that will create the the most uh like what am i trying to say the the most controlled bevel or you can actually select that edge and use bevel but then sometimes you'll get some weird triangles in the corners and stuff like that so um you could it just depends on what you're trying to do but there's some really cool stuff Okay, so we get back to noodling with this guy. <clears throat> okay, 
I'm gonna quickly do uh, yeah let's let's get back to this uh, this little this thing group this by normals I'll use some of those. So I'm probably grouping a single face and selecting these three. And then I'll hit extrude for this. See this case cover? I think I actually want this whole, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Hobble, hobble spots, that, that's, uh, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah, that Hellboy scope. Oh, man. Making his glove with this stuff. It would be... Yeah. It, it'd help you out a lot. Okay. I'm actually wanting to... <clears throat> I'm going to hide this belt. Oops, I don't want to clip it. <clears throat> so that's another thing. If you want to, um, if you want to assign a whole a polygroup to a whole thing, you can just isolate that thing and hit Control W, and it'll put that in a in its own polygroup. So for this, I wanted this whole thing to be in one polygroup. So I, so I can extrude it all together and make a lid, like a kind of a cap. Um, but I don't want the sides. I just want the top. Let's see. All right. I just want this. There we go. Let's extrude that. Polygroup all. I don't know what's going on. Oh. <laughs> Looks like I uh, I grabbed an extra face right here. Let's just put that in its own polygroup. There we go. <coughs> oh goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, how's it going? Okay. I'm actually going to use, uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to poly put this in its a similar poly group. So there, here's another trick too. If you want to uh, like eye drop a poly group. So I want this one to be yellow so I can extrude this belt along with the, the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and then hold down shift and then let go. And now I have yellow, the yellow poly group. And now I can assign it to that one. Now I'm going to extrude it all together. Okay. Now I'm going to extrude just this face. Just these three front ones without extruding this one. Let's see. Polygroup. There we go. There. So now it kind of looks like uh, this belt sticking out. Single face. And I'm just going to make this little point. So with this guy, I can transpose a single poly. I can just click on that guy. And that's really nice because what that does is you can see it puts the gizmo right in the center of my unmasked selection which is really cool because now I can just go boop and make it a point easy <clears throat> now I can do that group by normals crease by poly group hit D and there we have it I want to round out some of these edges Okay. Mm. 
trying to decide if I want to have these these round edges or not. Sometimes you get too many too many lines going on in here and you have to delete them and, and collapse stuff, make triangles. Gets a little too crazy. So then you have to go back to your uh, poly modeling days. <laughs> anyway. I'll probably just um, smooth that down by hand, like some manual, just to cut those crispy edges down. But for now, I think I'll just leave that as it is. I just put some belts, some buckles on there. Let's see. Let's get rid of that crease again. <clears throat> or bring it back. There we go. Colorful. <clears throat> now I'll just hold down control and du duplicate that guy. So we can overhang it over that coat just as long as it looks like it's connected. Let's make them a little smaller. They're a little too perfect. A little too CG looking. So we'll have to we'll have to uh, fix that later on. Sorry for the coughing, guys. I've had this cough since Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Santa. <clears throat> Santa bringing it to me. He's touching, touching everybody's stuff. Touching my cookies. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Warren. All right. Santa to the disease giver. <laughs> All right, let's see. Some what? Tussin? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry, Harry. I don't understand what you mean. I know you're joking around. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Because I'm dumb. Oh, t Tussin. Like Robitussin. All right. All right. Sorry. I totally botched your slang. I have these cough drops. I have coffee. <clears throat> Put some tussin on it. <laughs> I don't do good. Chris Rock. <coughs> mm. We don't hear much from Chris Rock these days. What's he up to? I can't get that out of my my head. Chris Roxy. Put some tussin on. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> NyQuil. Oh. That just gives me medicine head, man. Medicine head. Okay. Now I'm gonna cheat and duplicate these guys. Whoop. 
emergency. Is that like vitamin C? I love that new split on mass points they put in there. That's a lifesaver. I like it a lot. Whoops. Gotta turn off symmetry. I'm getting rid of one of these guys. See you. Get out of here. <clears throat> Shrink it down. I guess I could have waited until I had that little uh, that little notch guy in there, huh? Oh well. <clears throat> I don't even know what that is, Boyd. I don't think I've heard of it. <clears throat> Sounds good. My friend Ronnie was telling me some crazy concoction today some some tea I'm gonna try it it's like airborne oh okay Manuka honey. Mm. I like the cough drops that have honey in them. They're pretty good. Yes, vitamin C. I've, I, I have been using that a lot. How are there two different chats? Um, so I'm, I'm broadcasting three different places. I'm broadcasting to my, my Twitch page, Pixelogic Twitch page. That's where you should be watching it, is Pixelogic's Twitch page. So it's uh, twitch.tv slash Pixelogic, but I'm also broadcasting to my YouTube channel. Here. There you go. You should go there and watch it. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, come on over. <laughs> <clears throat> but I should see if you chat on well I saw your chat so I have a chat that gathers all of them and gives them to me and you can you can also read it in my screen too um Danny Mac showed me that. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Now that I have those little buckles. Um, let's see. I'm going to duplicate one and make it his main buckle. I'm really gonna regret not having those little, the little pin that goes through the belt holes. <coughs> ah. Okay, let's duplicate. Thanks for joining me. Pretend they're Velcro. <laughs> <You're just laughs> All right. I need to line this up. It's all weird. It's kind of skewed too. We'll get it fixed. I'll show you a trick. Because this is kind of a, should be symmetrical and mirrored. 
Yeah, I know. I'm just, I don't know. I'll make them. Because <laughs> I'm dummy. That's why. I'm a dummy and I'm going to regret it. Because I'm duplicating these all over the place without pins. I don't know. Okay. Let's solo it. Turn on the floor. See how close we are to the center. Okay. Now I can just mirror and weld this. Actually, where did it go from that side? This guy's not backwards, is he? No. Why is it mirroring the opposite way then? That's weird. Oh. Oh, I know why. Because I have local symmetry turned on. All right. Uh, there we go. Yeah, mirror and weld works with local symmetry. So you need to turn that off. Grr. Oh, thanks, man. <coughs> you too. Happy New Year to you too. Cheers. <laughs> ah. All right, that looks much better. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to put a little pin going to put a pin in it. Well, the symmetry's turned off. A little thick. And square. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are sculpting along with me and not just watching me. Awesome. Good to hear. <laughs> sure. Sure I am. <clears throat> Let's see. Yay. There's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> Oh, nice. New machines are always fun. Nice. You're going to have to show me when you're done. <clears throat> All right. I want to sink that down in. Oh. Top logical. There we go. Good enough. I kind of like them round like that, not so squarish. I'm going to take the creases off of these. What's up, Seagull Rush? Thanks for joining me. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I'm kind of out of it. <laughs> I've been... I've been Sick and lightheaded and crazy since Christmas. <clears throat> I 
All right, Eric, I'm checking it out. Oh, nice. <laughs> Huey, Dewey, or Louie, one of those guys. steal this 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 pin from this one <clears throat> oh, come on Bear with me, guys. <laughs> Be duplicating this pin around. Because I'm dumb. I work harder, not smarter today. <laughs> All right. Split the as points. Mirror. Mirror and weld. There we go. Buckles with pins. <clears throat> It'll be fun painting these stripes and these pants, huh? I've seen enough resolution to do it. I gotta do this belt with these uh, bullets. What do you think those, I guess those bullets must be for his big giant rifle here. I'll have to make them the right size. Let me look at that. I guess they are. Look at the end of that. That's a dino gun. <laughs> Killing dinos. <coughs> they look like, uh, they look like grenades, not bullets. Oh, I was in the military for a while and uh, I got sent out to this is live yes how's it going welcome <clears throat> so I was I was in the military and they're uh, they're supposed to qualify I think they're called m204s they're on the bottom of m16s I'm trying to remember the name of them anyway they're grenade launchers that go in the bottom of m16s and the 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 bullets they were grenades they they kind of look like these on hit this guy and when you when you shot them they they would tumble instead of like go like a bullet they would go like boom and then they would tumble out and boom, it was crazy <coughs> oh goodness 40 mic mics <laughs> Yeah, can't make me laugh. <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> oh, so Zen, that's a great that's a great question. Uh, so you're a student, you're used to modeling in the T pose. So T pose just I can't even talk tonight. T pose just means the arms are in a, a like a letter T, like a capital letter T. Um, that's how I used to model characters a long time ago. Uh, I prefer this is called an a pose so it's like a capital a and the reason why it depends on the amount of uh, movement that the arms are going to do if he's going to be raising his arms above his head a lot i'll still put him in a t pose but if he's just going to be running and not not really raising his arms above his head too much you'll get a better deformation out of your models if, if you model them in an a pose they'll just look better overall yes i will I will be sculpting the dinosaur later on probably not later on tonight but later on in these uh so i i broadcast on this pixelogic channel every tuesday at um nine o'clock pacific so you can catch me every tuesday night and if you're interested i give away this user interface these brushes and my ruler file for free 
you can go get them on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Let me put a link over there. Here you go. So you can get my brushes and my user interface right there for free. Um, I also give you some, uh, some free training. And I also teach an online course if you're interested. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a workshop. The 3D character workshop is an actual workshop. So um, and I have a whole bunch of students in there that are phenomenal. And I will be opening my course up later in this later this month so if you sign up for those brushes you'll get on my newsletter and then you'll uh, you'll be notified when the course goes or the enrollment opens up again so if you're interested in that <clears throat> let's see yeah some drawing um the best place to look for that is like uh art station or something like that there's a whole bunch of great concept artists on art station <laughs> okay let's see I want to put those little pins in these two guys so let's duplicate these what's up night shadow welcome Save this real quick. Yep, Boyd, you're right. <coughs> and I'll, sometimes we'll even model it in the A pose, and then we'll we'll uh, push him up into the T pose after we make a game character out of him. That's that's uh, something that happens once in a while. Oh, Night Shadow, sorry. Still finish it up though, man. Those those challenges are there just to give you give you a reason to do to do some sculpting. So if you're sculpting, you're doing good. It sold out in an hour. <laughs> I I'm not surprised at all. His, his class is a great next step from mine. Um, I've, I've used Maya and 3D Studio Max. Um, I haven't spent much time in Blender. Oh, nice. Did you guys see the entries? I gotta show you guys the entries. <clears throat> I'm gonna show them off. Hope those guys don't mind. So, uh, for my workshop, every two months, I do a challenge. Well, this is the second challenge that I've done. Um, let's see. And I did a winter challenge. So here we go. So these, this is student work. If you guys can see this, this is one of them. Can I go? Uh, I need a better viewer. There's another one. 
Another one. This one's really good. Daryl Uribe did this one. This one he took all the way to a game character. Fantastic. Let's see. This one. They're just opening a lot. <laughs> just opening them all back here. It's like Lucio fan art. Super good. This awesome deer on a snowboard. Rudolph. Two more. Check that out. So good. The last one. Yes, this was all done in ZBrush, this guitar with the Z modeler. She did a great job. So, anyway, awesome stuff. <coughs> Super proud. I'm like proud papa. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay, cool. That should be good. Okay. I think I'm gonna do, um, what am I gonna do? I could either make this belt or these teeth. Let's finish this area up really quick. Shouldn't take too long. <coughs> Thanks, Boyd. Thanks, guys. I'm sure the students would love to hear that. Uh, can you select faces, verts, and edges? Not, not in the typical way like you think. ZBrush uses brushes, so you can move them around and you can do some things like extrusions and cuts and all that kind of stuff, but it's not, it's not a box modeling program like your traditional box modeling program. Instead, you use this brush called the Z Modeler brush. So it's more of a organic sculpting program. Oh yeah, those are those two are great. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm gonna grab this color. There we go, that's what I wanted. <clears throat> yeah, Randy, Randy Bishop is fantastic to sculpt his stuff because uh, he knows his volumes really well. <clears throat> Same with uh, Luigi Lucerelli, I think his last name is. He does really good stuff. Nice. Filling your brain with all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> okay. Hey, what's going on, Hannibal? <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to try and get this uh, this edge here.
<laughs> Whoops. Yeah, boy, this is what I'm talking about. You have to kind of get creative sometimes. Increase this. <clears throat> I kind of want a kind of a deeper cut around here. Oh, cool. Do it. There we go. Bolo. Tooth necklace. <clears throat> Man, this guy's got all sorts of stuff. this that little necklace <clears throat> how to measure proportions using the transpose tool like a true analog caliper can the measurement be locked and anchored on one side so it'll only rotate at one set measured radius you know I really wish it could you might try the plug-in called oh what is it called It's not the transpose master scale master this thing right here scale master um, you can kind of do it with the transpose tool and scale master um, look up scale master Joseph Drust on Google and you'll find some more information on it he, he, he walks you through exactly how to use it that's probably the closest thing that ZBrush has to actual measuring <clears throat> and that's why I actually put in a a ruler I have a ruler in here that I use I'll show it to you in one second what come on it's not wanting to draw today come on hook up Yeah, it doesn't. I have a ruler. Um, here, I'll show it to you. Let me just finish. Let me. It's driving me mad. Come on. Why? Why? There we go. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to make this make a little this little necklace thing okay so ruler file it's just right here and I made it in Maya and what it is it's a it's a two meter ruler in Maya and then I brought it over here and I turned it into a 20 centimeter ruler with the markings on it. And that's where the grid is subdivided. And also the floor is subdivided into centimeters, you can see here. But you can also use it, it depends on your, your scale, like your, uh, because 
ZBrush doesn't have a set scale. It doesn't have units. It just has ZBrush units. So you kind of have to make up your own. And um, <clears throat> if I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna do a little character like these Disney Infinity characters, I usually work in millimeters. So this ruler would be 200 millimeters tall, or you could think of it like 20 centimeters tall. But if I'm doing a game character, I will usually use this ruler like it's two meters tall. And I have it set up, I worked with Joseph Druss to set this up. And you can see on export, the scale is set to 100 because that's the difference between going from ZBrush to Maya and back again, the scale is set to 100. So if you were to export this out with the scale being set at 100 and come back in from Maya, if you export OBJ and bring it back in OBJ, then it will, it will match, it will stay the same. Or if you leave FBX and come back FBX, it will stay the same. So you just kind of have to, you have to mess with it. But I give you, I give away this free ruler file over on my 3D Character Workshop website. So if you want to go hop over there and grab it, it's free. And same with this floor. This floor comes with it. It's it's broken up like this. But anyway, that's uh, that's why I put this ruler in there, and that's why I use it that way. So. See, the, so this guy's going to be a game character. He's he's about this tall, you know, almost two meters tall. So that's that's just kind of how I do it. Helps me out. And then I can hand it off to somebody and they can go, okay, I can see how tall he is, you know. <clears throat> so you want to ask if it's better to mask and extract objects like clothes or better to use topo brush like Redbeard and I saw with his skeleton character on Instagram. Oh, um, yeah, so I it depends on what I'm doing, but uh, I, I typically use the topology brush for all my stuff. If it's, if it's pretty detailed and pretty dense and it's going to take me forever to draw the topology, like if I'm doing lace or something, then that's the only time I'll really use the mask extract method. The reason I use the topology method, hand-drawn thing, is because... Um, I just have more control and lower polygons, and that's 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 the only reason why, really. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Let's go back to this <coughs> analog sculptor. Bro oh man, that broke. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure how uh, real world scale would come in and how you'd keep it that way. Um, that's, yeah, that's something you could ask the, the Pixelogic guys. I'm sure they'll be happy to answer that. I've never done it, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I've never 3D scanned something real world to put in there. Sounds fun, though. Uh, the normals. Oh, you can. You can share a pic. Like, you can share a link if you want, if you have it somewhere. Is Keyshot Bridge a full render software? Do you have to have Keyshot by itself? So, Keyshot is um, it's a third party renderer. It's not part of ZBrush, and then you need the Keyshot Bridge to push your models to it. You can render inside of ZBrush, um, but uh, Keyshot is a professional renderer. That's what it's made for. And uh, just stuff comes out looking super nice out of Keyshot. That's, so all of the marketing shots for Disney Infinity, they were all done in Keyshot. Oh yeah, yeah. Michael Popovich would know for sure. So, is it better to have Keyshot or Toolbag Three? They're they're different. They're both renderers, but Toolbag Three is more for um, real time game characters. 
and baking maps. It's extremely good at baking maps. Um, it will do renders, but Keyshot is more of like a, a high resolution product renderer where Marmoset is more like a uh, low resolution um, game renderer, if that makes sense, to show off your models, your low resolution models. It'll also res it will also render high resolution models as well, but um, it, it's, yeah, just a little different. <coughs> How do I work for hours on end? Um, I have a standing desk. This, this desk is a convertible, so it'll go up and down and I'll stand up for a while and get my, get my blood flowing and then I'll drop it back down. The reason I'm, I usually stand when I do my streams, but tonight I'm sitting because I'm not feeling too, too good. So I'm hanging out here. <coughs> oh my goodness. I apologize for the coughing. <coughs> All right. Let's see. Let's do the teeth. That'll be fun. Should build them on this vest. Need a way to stand. You know, if you don't have a set to stand desk, just take a break every 30, 15, 30 minutes. Just go walk around, you know, get the blood flowing and then come back. And a lot of times you'll get a, a new view of your model too. You'll be like, oh, I didn't see that before. And then you can sit down and get to it again. <laughs> Thanks, Osmar. Yeah, this, this cough has been horrendous. And then I got food poisoning yesterday. So I was not doing good. I had double sickness yet last night. That was not fun. Yeah. So... Um, you know, you, you can, you can render high resolution stuff inside of tool bag. So, uh, it just can't handle as high of rent of, of, uh, models. It'll handle pretty high models and you, you can do poly paint. It just takes a little bit of a setup. Like you have to set up the materials to view vertex coloring and then assign those materials. It will render high resolution stuff and it will look really nice. So do you need Keyshot? You know, yeah, Keyshot is for, it's for like high resolution marketing shots. It depends on what you want to do with it, you know. But you can buy Keyshot through the Pixelogic website. So you want to get Keyshot for ZBrush. Don't go buy the Keyshot that's a standalone because that is a whole different thing that's like a professional uh, industry rendering software that's like $3,000, you know. it's. You want to get the one that's just for ZBrush to render your characters out. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. There's there's some there's some ways to use it, for sure. And I, I I love it. I love it, especially for baking maps. It's so good. Okay, let's go. Make one of these teeth. When am I going to do the shoulder armor? Um, probably not tonight. I'll probably get to that next week. I'm just going to make these teeth really quick. All right, Dre. Thanks for dropping by, man. Yeah, I'm going to be done here in about 10 minutes. <clears throat> Yeah, I usually use that for um, UVs and retopology. That's about. It does some good other things too. <clears throat> Let's see. Clip it.
Osmo, let's see. You came in late when you were showing some student work, so I probably just missed the discussion. When are you going to open up your character course again? Uh, rough estimate. Um, thanks for asking. I'm going to be opening it up uh, sometime in the middle of this month. So I'll be watching for that. Uh, yeah, I'll be... I, I want to do... There's, there's one more lesson that I wanted to add uh, pretty shortly. And as soon as I get that up, I want to... I'll open it up for enrollment again. <clears throat> but make sure you get on that newsletter and you'll be notified when it opens. I'm excited to get some new students for the new year. Be fun. Um, if you have to hide part of a model to work on a part, do you just mask hide visibility then mirror and weld after to hold symmetry? No. Um, so I, I can kind of understand, let's see, the inside of the legs of the boots, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, sometimes I'll do that. I will hide, like delete half of it and then just work on the inside and then flip it. Um. I, I don't do that very often because typically I can kind of get in there and work it. But uh, yeah, once in a while I'll do that. From the Marvel, the Hunter. Yeah, like the... What's, what's that guy's name? The Hunter. I forgot about that guy. Okay. I'm going to use the loops that it has. <clears throat> Cool. Oh, not clip. I want to clip. Craven the Hunter. <laughs> Craven. That's right. This is just going to be that band that's around the teeth that's kind of connected to the, the necklace. Okay. <laughs> Craven the Hunter. Extrude. Poly group all. <laughs> Mask by poly group. Eventually, I'll you know color these properly, but there you go. Let's make it bigger. Dying. Dying. Feels like it. Those might be might be hooking a little too much now. Let's 
smooth that down a little bit. There we go. That looks more like a tooth or a claw or something. <clears throat> All right, man. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. Have a great new year. See you next time, hopefully. something like that <clears throat> and then I'll get these bolo these little cylinders done need to make sure these are kind of pressed down into his chest so they'll print so they would come out of a mold if I molded it that's the thing is you don't want to have any undercuts that's why I'm pushing everything into everything else Details, details, details. Next week we should be able to get this uh, this this bullet thing going on. I might do it off off camera. We'll see. Uh, so I can start getting into that dinosaur, start modeling that dinosaur. I'm pretty anxious to get that going. And then I want to Z model these these weapons. So that'll be fun doing the the pistol and the this rifle. So maybe I'll finish up the detail offline so it's not so boring. Um, okay, I won't do the shoulders off camera. You can go watch um, a previous episode and see how I did these, these wrist guards. I'll do those exactly the same. I'll do the shoulder exactly the same. I think it's in episode three or something like that. So you can check that out. Um, yeah, it's all. so all of these are on uh, YouTube. So if you go... Type uh, Shane Olson on YouTube, Shane Olson ZBrush. You'll find my past streams, and you can see all of the how I've worked on this guy. So, and you can see me how I made those wrist guards. Anyway, um, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Sorry I had a cold and I was coughing into the microphone. I really apologize for that, but uh, I didn't didn't want you guys to miss out. So. <clears throat> this is the 10th one for this model is it it, it could be i think the pirate girl took me 12 but those were three hour streams and i've i've dropped down to two hour streams so we'll uh we'll see how that goes but anyway yeah thanks guys thank you pixelogic for letting me do this um it's been extremely fun i love streaming and you, you should check out all the other streamers on here they're getting a lot of new guys on here like michael thompson and um uh like tomas whittleback i think he's he was on yesterday i think ashley's on tomorrow check her out um yeah some super good streamers give them your love follow pixelogic and you'll be notified when they come on live and check them out and uh, I even think some of the Pixelogic guys are on, like uh, Solomon is doing some. Paul Gabriel does ask, or did you know? Something like that. Um, and uh, I think there's a trial, a ZBrush trial down below here if you want to try ZBrush out. And uh, if you want to learn more about ZBrush, you can go to Ask ZBrush or the Z Classrooms. And uh, like I said, I give away my free user interface and my brushes and my ruler file. So if you are interested in that, you can go over to uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and grab that for free. And I also do some free training. You can check that out. And uh, you will be put on my newsletter. And that is for my online workshop. I do an online workshop that uh, I have. I think I have over 300 students now on that thing. So um, 
I would love I would love to have more and see you guys in there. So anyway, thank you so much for dropping by and hanging out with me tonight. And I hope to see you next week. We'll get this guy wrapped up and start getting on that dinosaur. So thanks, guys. Have a good one. And uh, take care. Happy New Year. I got to find out how to turn this off. <laughs> All right. See you guys.